Yeah. Okay. We'll go ahead and call the um, July 19th, 2021 Water Board meeting to order. Um, Heather, can we do the roll call? Uh, Todd Williams. Here. Allison Gould. Here. Tom Duster. Here. Scott Holwick. Here. Roger Lang. Here. Ken Dusen. Present. Uh, Nelson uh, Tipton. No. Uh, Wes Lowry. Here. Kevin Bowden. No. Francis Jaffe. Here. Jason Elkins. No. David Bell. No. Heather McIntyre's here. Councilmember Mark. Here. We okay. have a quorum. Great. Thank you, Heather. So item three is the approval of the previous month's minutes. Um, the June 21st, 2021 meeting minutes. Has everybody had a chance to look at those? Any questions, comments, or if not, we need a motion to approve those? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay, and Allison seconded that. <clears throat> any, sec any further comment? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mr. Yeah. Chair, I was going to abstain from voting. I wasn't present last night. Okay. I was, was going to say the same. Yeah. Same. Same. Well, I'm sorry. I want to welcome Tom oh, to sure. his, his first meeting here, too. So thank you. Um, all right. So we're on to item five. Public invited to be heard in special presentations. Is there any? None? Okay. Item six, agenda revisions and submission of documents. Okay. Yeah, I have, a, I have a couple just for the record. Um, the chair asked me quite a while ago to hand out a straight line diagram, but this is our first in person <laughs> meeting, so you probably don't even remember how <laughs> I apologize. But I have a I have a straight line diagram for everybody that I'll hand out um, later in the meeting. Um, I also when we get to um, item eight A, I have a handout uh, a potential change on the water supply agreement that I'll hand out and, and talk about at that point. Um, just a real quick uh, update also, we just got our bond rating back from uh, for the sale of the bonds, part of the, the bonds we're going to get a permit project. We got, um, we got a double A and a double A plus rating, which are really very good ratings. Um, and that, that has those, um, so that's the last thing we need to do to get ready to sell the bonds and so We'll be selling those later this month and we'll let you know how they go and what we get but we're, we're expecting a pretty decent um, uh, bond sale because of the good bond rating that that's everything that's all the water board work over the years the staff work it's uh, you know a good system it's good financing financial so it was good to get that so that's all the great revisions i have thank you that's good news um, okay, with that, we're on to um, item seven, which is the development activity. Did you want me to do a what, quick water status report? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, it's I'm not jump over that. Yeah. Number four, why don't you go ahead and do that? Yeah, so the flow in the St. Marine at Lyons was 122 CFS, with a 124 year average of 300 CFS. Um, the call in the St. Marine is rough and ready ditch, admin 7,012. Uh, appropriation date March 13th, 1869. Call on the main stem of the South Platte is Springdale Ditch, admin 13,349, the priority date of July 19th, 1886. St. Rain Basin storage at the beginning of July was at 90%. Alprise Reservoir, Button Rock uh, is full, and we're releasing approximately 50 CFS. Union Reservoir is also near full and releasing 10 CFS. <clears throat> and that's all I have unless there's some questions. Okay. Is there any questions for Wes on the water status report? Wes, could you hand me a napkin? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Something really important. Good timing. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Wes, how many days of Free River did we end up with? <clears throat> we um, ended up with. Um, Around 40, somewhere between 45 and 55 days. It was a full month and then some. So it's actually a, we turned out to be a pretty good run. We had the best, the best basin uh, runoff in, in the state. So we did, we did pretty well. We filled it, everything up that we were looking to fill. How did the overall basin end up as far as storage capacity? Or so percent? in total, it was around 90% for our select storage. Those that 
um, like you think about uh, Button Rock, Pleasant Valley, McIntosh, Union, some of those that we really have a strong interest in, we're like 98%. Mm -hmm. And uh, so really good. Yeah. And what were the ones that were lagging? Was it Pine? Pleasant Valley, okay. I think we, we didn't quite fill it. We, we had some capacity restrictions uh, and um, we, had, we, we tried to anticipate and run it early. Uh, there's another small reservoir that fills on the top end of that dish that had to fill as well. Um, but I, we're, we've got all the water in there that we really feel like we're going to have to have. So we're, we're in good shape. Okay, mm -hmm. Great, thank you. That, sorry to skip that. We're on to uh, item seven, which is development activity. Is that uh, who's handling that? Is that you, Liz? I've got that. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, before uh, we start this docket item, and if I can indulge, I'll, I'll say for both 7A on the agenda and 8, Alliance status that I work with, uh, work for, uh, represents the uh, golden entity. So I'd like to recuse myself from the uh, conversation and the hearing, but I'd like to ask the, the board's indulgence to let me stay in the room over in the corner and listen because we have so few dedication variances that I'd like to learn. So I'm not going to say a word, but if that's okay with you. Yeah, I, that's fun with me. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. So what's in front of the board is the Irwin Thomas final plat. As the board may recall, uh, this was in front of the board back in April. There was a slight revision in the, in the acreage uh, since that time. And so this current plat reflects that um, change in acreage. So Irwin Thomas final plat is a 48.86 acre parcel located south of Colorado State Highway 119 west of North 119th Street. All the historic water rights were transferred at time of annexation. The full 48.86 acres are subject to the full requirements of the raw water requirement policy. <clears throat> the total raw water deficit for Irwin Thomas Final Plat is 48.86 acre feet or one <coughs> acre foot of water per acre of land. So Irwin Thomas will be in compliance with the city's raw water requirement policy upon satisfaction of the 48.86 acre foot deficit at time of final plat approval. On the very bottom, you'll notice that the Irwin Thomas final plat includes a 16.82 acre lot and a nine acre lot identified to be used as part of Longmont's economic development building incentive program and its affordable housing incentive program, respectively. And so I'm going to just briefly uh, kind of show those. So, Heather, I'm going to ask you just to kind of bounce to the next page. And then we'll, so there's there's the plat to give you a general location. I think you guys kind of know we're just um, east of kind of the, the um, development with where you have Lowe's and Chick-fil-A and all that. Um, it's undeveloped right now, we're east of that little turn turnout there. Um, if you want to go to the next page. So on that top map, this is just, we don't normally, would normally show this, but we wanted to help Water Board to have a, an understanding of what this is going to look like during this development. Because even though it's not part of this final plat, uh, pertinent to the development, overall development of the entire property, the entire annexed area, there's going to be some mining and uh, reclamation. And so, it, again, it's not specific, but I wanted to have, let you guys have an understanding of what that's going to look like. So the plat itself is speaking towards kind of that red part uh, square and then the brown part below. That's kind of the area that is part of this plat. Um, when they mine, there'll be, um, right now it's looked at, there's gonna be about seven different mine pits, a couple on the uh, north side of 119 and the remainder on the south side. And then if you scroll up a little bit, Heather, <clears throat> when it's all done, it's anticipated there'll be um, certain remaining ponds, if you will, where the other will be reclaimed and there'll be some better development. So this is this is a um, kind of a concept. It's not set in stone, but that's the way it's going to look as you guys are driving through 119. You'll see, you know, for years there'll be the mining application out there, and then once it's all done, it'll look something like that. So um, if you want to go to the next page, Heather. So <clears throat> as the board may recall, back in August, uh, of 2018, for those of you that were here, um, Water Board recommended City Council approve up to 14, uh, 400 acre feet of the 1,200 acre feet of community development incentives identified in the Longmont Water Demand Evaluation. 
be earmarked to support Longmont's affordable housing incentive program. So <clears throat> as part of that, we have, the way we're going to track this is fairly simple. It's gonna be fairly analytical. We're gonna start off with 400 acre feet. And as there's lots that are gonna be pertinent to Longmont's affordable housing incentive program, we will apply that credit that was earmarked as I just described. So this is the first time that we've had an application of that uh, uh, credit. So when the plat gets signed, there'll be a credit of nine acre, uh, nine acre feet of water that'll be debited from the original 400 acre feet. This is for one month's affordable housing. And then um, if you'll scroll up to the next one, Heather. <clears throat> Similarly, um, so you started off with 1,200, 400 of which went to the affordable housing. The remaining 800, as we're showing it right now, is for Longmont's economic development incentive. So what we have here is, is that lot, which I put in the asterisks of the, of the report. There's a 16.82 acre lot, one acre foot deficit for a 16.82 acre foot uh, deficit. And we're gonna subtract that from the 800 acre foot. So this will just start growing on. Now the one um, the one point I would make for Longmont's economic development incentive, I think, I guess I didn't see it in, actually. Actually, maybe it's on the next page. Yeah, the, go to the next page, Heather, all the way down, so I can see the very bottom. That's good. So one thing I was going to make note of: we've included the um, uh, policies pertinent to the raw water affordable housing and the economic. Uh, development incentive. I don't think it's, it's not relatively complex, but these are the, the pertinent parts to it. And for economic development, it shows you, and you can read it right there, that the businesses that um, get that incentive, we need to show that they're generating annual sales and use tax revenues of at least uh, $2.5 million. So this isn't just willy-nilly give it out to anybody. And this is a, and as it's been um, expressed, this is for a potential future Costco um, site. And so it's believed to be in Longmont's best interest to incentivize them to build in Longmont, and that's where this credit is going to be applied. So, but again, <clears throat> emphasis added. This I think with what's in front of the board is truly just a normal development activity. There's a one acre foot deficit per acre, so a total of 48.86 acre feet. There's a credit for those two parts, and then the remainder will satisfy. However, I'm, I'm guessing will be satisfactory. With cash and repayment. Okay. So, and if there's other questions, I'll try to. Or Ken can help answer questions. And and some 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 uh, things you have possible questions on may be also part of our further discussion on the fire supply and ground but so Whatever you got. So, as we did, there's a 25.82 acre foot credit, nine acre feet for affordable housing, 16.28 for economic development. Yeah. And a remaining 23.04 acre foot deficit that they'd have to satisfy yeah. as it normally would. That's correct. Okay. Is there any questions for? Go ahead, Roger. No, the revenue, uh -huh. anticipated revenue. How how are they substantiating that? What what's the I'll process? Look at, you look at either Marshall or Kim. <laughs> I can I can uh, probably answer that, and and if you need me to, I'll scrape it out packet from uh, last spring if you want to read it and send you a link to it but um, there was an extensive economic study done um, about um, you know two ways first comparables like how much does Sam's Club how much sales and use tax revenue does it generate and how much economic uh, activity does it turn around and how many you know who, how many people does it employ um, and then Costco opened up the kimono and said, this is the economic performance of comparable stores in similar locations. And uh, actually the um, economic contribution to Longmont's um, economy is, is just pretty staggering. Um, so uh, uh, to the extent that the, you know, the city manager went to great lengths to broker this deal because um, we couldn't come to terms on their, on their first choice of a site. Um, so 
uh, it's 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 pretty solid information, and if you would send me a note, I'll get you the. Well, is it is it would you classify it as a conservative estimate, or is that a? I mean, that's cons that two point five million is very conservative. This is the okay. minimum that's necessary to be okay. in consideration okay. for any development. Yeah. Yeah, I just wondered how how we came to the number, how it was substantiated. So I guess we're just tracking to see how it goes, but. Thank you. Allison, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Thank you. Sure. Um, I was wondering more about the excavation and then what was going to become of the what looks like four different reservoirs as a part of the one month water system once those were constructed. Yeah, so the, uh, the excavation actually predates even the annexation of the property into the city of Longmont. And, um, Do you mean the mining? The mining, oh. yeah. This property was going to be mined in the mid annex in the city. So, mid annex had had the mining. So, basically, it's just going to be mined as any traditional uh, gravel mining operation. On the south side of Incrot Boulevard, they're going to leave a couple of the spent quarries. They're going to, um, the operator and the landowner are kind of still negotiating that a little bit. But, uh, ideas that they'll be slurry lined and, and turned into. Um, I guess maybe I could, Mark could probably tell, say it better, but an aesthetic uh, ponds that they'll develop around them. Um, for the north side of 119, the city is um, currently negotiating with the mine operator and the landowner. Well, we're the landowner north of 119, Ken Pratt. The Golden Companies south of 119. Um, we're negotiating to have that as a flow through wetland, constructed wetland, similar to what, um, if you've been out to Sandstone Ranch, um, what we did out there, I think uh, that's really a model, honestly, for sort of a really neat reclamation, uh, functional uh, rec reclamation. And uh, so we're we're hopeful, we're hopeful that will happen, but that's it's like the next negotiation. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll actually, on the water supply agreement, give a lot more detail on that. But yeah, it's basically uh, storage on the south side. Do you have an estimate about how big those are? Potentially. Um, the acreage is on the map. One yeah, is like 16, and one is like. Top two, the top left says eight acres, I think, okay. and the top right says seven. But we don't know how deep they are. Yeah. We don't know how deep they are. The no. yeah. resource is about. It's about 150 or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere, if the resource out there ranges between 15 and 25 feet deep. Yeah. So that makes sense. But by the time you get to bedrock, it's it's a little different. But when we're looking at mining it, it's a 25 to feet mm -hmm. slurry wall. Would these be concentrated for a water right for, I mean, a traditional junior water right? It might not be very useful, but maybe an onfill? Um, we're just starting to have those conversations. I, I believe they will just because they'll want to fill them up <laughs> as they evaporate. Because if they slurry line them, then they'll, they'll need any storage. There, there actually is a conversation with the bonus ditch company, which so what is the ditch on the west side of all this property about a, a pipe system through they've reserved that capability to, to fill those from the local the local ditch is the bonus ditch ditch potentially or I, I would suspect I, they haven't quite thought that completely through exactly how they're gonna do it. I know one of them has always been planned to be a storage reservoir, which I presume they would so the, the bonus ditch, the historic water, the irrigated, yeah, where those yeah. reservoirs are located, yeah. so they'd be just changing those for, um, do a change of use to be able to put those in the last storage. Yeah. Well, that's what the storage is. We'll go through that. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Is there any other questions? Go ahead, Dan. Go ahead, John. Uh, it's just, um, so, 
the tally, the two tally sheets, the uh, one for economic development and the other for affordable housing, um, those were originally agreed upon, it looks like in 2018, there's only one thing on the list. So this isn't like something that is enormously popular, uh, not popular is the wrong word, but enormously used such that there's some kind of competition for this water that we have to like really discuss and parse out in the best way possible. This is really the first one on the list and it seems like- That's exactly right. That's, that's why we're bringing this aspect of it. This is the first time we've applied this part of the policy. And it's, and again, it's, it's very, it's a fairly high standard to even be in consideration of applying it this way. And when Water Board made their determination in 2018, they set forth that high standard that says, if you're going to be able and allowed to have this incentive, you're gonna to have to truly bring something exceptional to Longmont. That's what this, pro this project is proposing. Okay. Maybe the other thing, for Tom's benefit. So, I mean, the, the city's been trying to do kind of a build out. What's the build out water demand? And these were put into the water demand, supply and demand comparison. So, you know, that's kind of the other element of this is how much water do we develop and also allocate water to um, the affordable housing and the economic development. So, that's kind of the other place this plays in is if there were a run on this, I think there'd be a question of if you're going to allocate more water to this sort of purpose without them bringing water, then the city's going to have to develop more water supply. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's the other place I think this plays into the long term uh, supply and demand planning for the city. Sure. And so, what on what other tally sheet or on what other spreadsheet does that 1,200 acres, acre foot exist? Like, so in other words, like, is that you have that in a reservoir somewhere or is that just so? Um, Water that you know you have a little play in the system. Or something. Yeah. In 2012, and then it was updated in 2018. We did what we call a future water demand evaluation. So we looked at how much water we'll need. Luckily, Longmont, luckily, unluckily, Longmont's pretty well ringed by either open space or other developed areas. So we pretty much know what Longmont's going to look like um, throughout a complete planning horizon. And so in our more recent water demand, future water demands, we said, well, what do we need to build all this area? Um, so in that study, we evaluated um, a number of factors, and one of them was um, a carve-out for economic growth. So, so, so basically, in our water planning, this water is there through other means, but enough to build out. So, that's why Water Board felt it was a good idea to track it, because if we ever get close to the 1,200 acre feet, which we don't feel we ever get there, we don't feel we'll ever exceed it, but we should track it. So many years down the road, <laughs> if we do get, if we do hit that, then we got to think about it and, and make decisions. Um, to be real honest, when we did those evaluations, the way we did it was took all the water, all the land that was not had the deficits already met and estimated how much you know could be used for economic development or affordability and, and that was the maximum number so, so we don't we don't believe we'll ever exceed it we, you know, if all if our if our 2020 vision is perfect yeah. uh, we don't feel we'll ever exceed it or we don't feel we'll ever have to kind of apportion it out but it's certainly something we want to track thank you for this, this is the second approval come our way in the last few months and I'm not just my question is down the line will there be more that we will have to approve on this plan other than this point um, that things change you know, I, probably not in economic development because because there's only a few small lots left for for commercial type the rest of it's residential there might might not be some affordable housing um, if this affordable housing program goes through Project goes great. Uh, you know, it, I can't say that there won't be more affordable housing out there. But, but, but I was talking about this particular piece of property we're looking at right now. We had an approval you know, and, a couple and, months ago. And, yes. and, there, and, there, and again, I, I, hope I maybe I wasn't really clear. So the, the pri one of the primary reasons this is back before the board is because the acreage changed and therefore the requirement mm -hmm. acreage changed. So when it came through in the beginning, it was a smaller plat of ground. 
because it changed, we wanted to be sure water board seeing the acreage as it stood is gonna be asked to be approved by council. So had we not had that change, it may not have even been necessary to come back and forth uh, in front of the board, but we wanna be sure that what we're signing off on in the approved plat matches what water board see. And so that's the real reason why we thought it would. And we thought this would be a great opportunity to expand a little bit for your water board's knowledge and greater context when we talk about this water supply agreement here in just a minute. One question was, so this ties to the red and brown and orange parcels, right? Uh, the red and brown. And the road. And the road, okay. So the, the lakes, you were mentioning they're gonna do a slurry wall around them. Those may be, want to keep them high for amenity. So does that mean down the road, they may come in with a plan for the balance of the property to the east? Correct. Um, and that, maybe Roger, for your benefit, <clears throat> if, if they were doing economic development or low cost housing, maybe there'd be another request, but that's properties not included in this. Right. this I, was, I was just looking at the three colored property. Yeah. Okay. We, we had talked about, no, I didn't realize the acreage. Okay. And that explains it. So. Okay. okay, great. Um, anything else? I don't think so. Do you need a recommendation by the water board? It would, it would be preferred to have a recommendation as presented. So we need a motion by the water board to recommend um, the council approve the um, water uh, requirement as described in the memo. I'll move. There's a motion. Is there a second? A second. Allison seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Carries. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, we do not have anything under. We're under nothing for 7B, so now we're under 8A, which is the water, or the Irwin Thomas Water Supply Agreement. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have two water supply agreements before you today. Um, for the most part, they are fairly, they are fairly standard uh, water supply agreements that you would normally see. There are um, a couple things though, about the history of the I need to, it was slightly different, so I wanted to um, highlight that. And then the second thing is uh, I'd like to hand out, um, I'll hand out a uh, potential change in the second of the agreements. Um, it's just, I'll, I'll explain that when I get to the second agreement. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of the history, the, the property that we were just looking at, um, so this property north of Kim Pratt Boulevard is owned by the city open space um, in the property south that's being mined is still owned by Golden Companies. Um, if you go back uh, in history a little bit, um, all of that property was going to be mined at one time and um, the Golden Companies sold the property north of Kim Pratt to the county who then sold the property to Longmont. And so now we own that, we call it Golden Farms. Um, both there and then north of north of the creek, there's a another smaller parcel. You can't, you can't really see it there, but um, actually, maybe if you go into this one, this piece, um, it's exhibit A to, to both agreements. Um, there you go. Yeah. So, the property in green is is what. Um, what the city obtained from the county. Uh, and there's also one small parcel north of the railroad tracks that also is contemplated for mining. Um, at one time, the entire area was being contemplated for mining. So when we, when Longmont purchased that property from the county, the Dodge and Golden Companies, um, the, the mining was already set, it was already permitted through the county. Um, and ready to go. So as a result, um, the, the mining company had, um, had always planned on 
utilizing the historical water on the property for the mining operations. Um, when we acquired the property in green, um, we, the city acquired um, two shares of the bonus ditch company, which uh, in that agreement, it was agreed that that water would be able to be used for the mining operation even though it was included in the overall. So, so when it's all done and over, you will still own the water once the mining is done. Uh, and then um, south of Ken Pratt Boulevard, while originally that um, bonus, the bonus water that was south of the creek um, of, of Ken Pratt was planned to be used for the mining operation, but then when they annex, of course, you have to dedicate all the historical water to the city. Um, and then consistent with our long-standing policy in Longmont, we do lease the historical water back to the landowner until the time that it develops. So um, there's really two parts to, to the overall uh, mining operation. The first part is a short-term water supply. But basically, they need a water supply while they're mining, both both to augment any stream depletions that occur during the time of mining, but also um, for mining operations, uh, dust control, those type of things. We certainly wanted to keep the dust down out there, right beside our, our community. Um, but also when they take the product out, when they haul the, the uh, sand and gravel out, it necessarily takes water out of that sand and gravel. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you, you know, haul many, many truckloads every day, that's a lot of water. So between all of that, um, there is a water demand during the time of mining. So of the two mining agreements, um, you'll see one mining agreement um, will say, uh, make sure I say exactly what it says. We call it the temporary mining water supply. Um, and it's a short-term agreement, um, only lasting for the extent of mining. And uh, then the second water supply agreement is a longer term. It's proposed to be a 20-year uh, agreement, um, and it will be for what's called the reclamation. Once they're done mining, they have to reclaim the area, and uh, any any latent latent uh, impact on the stream has to be. the water has to be replaced to the stream. Uh, we don't believe there's a lot, there, there's gonna be a lot of water, so, so but this agreement, the um, second agreement, the reclamation agreement, um, kind of is the maximum amount of water, so the agreement is up to that amount. Um, they, they're currently, the Golden companies are negotiating with the mining company, and they want to, um, they're gonna, we're pretty sure they're gonna slurry wall, the, the pits south of there. Um, we still have to sit down with the city and the Golden companies and um, the mining company to, to determine whether, I don't know that there'll be a slurry lining if we end up doing it as a reclaimed wetland, but that's yet to be determined. But there's there's sufficient water in the, even in the program. At any rate, all the mining, all the water has to be done by either Golden's or the mining company through the process of mining and reclamation. Uh, after we sent out on the on the second agreement, um, after we sent out the um, copy to water board, in the recitals, it, it really doesn't, it's not a real big deal, but um, on subparagraph F of the second agreement, the reclamation, there is a uh, provision there that basically describes there's a mining lease between the two company, the, the mining company and Golden's, which we're not a party to, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll let that stand as is, but both those parties wanted uh, reference in the, mine, in the water uh, supply agreement to their, tying it to their mining lease. Uh, in that mining lease, it, it had this first language in paragraph F, it says the lessor Golden Companies would supply all the water owned by Golden Companies for the mining company's operation during the mining lease. 
And that says, provided that least these operations are conducted in accordance with the reclamation plan. So the language I have in red, after we sent it out, the uh, mining company said, well, we're really not sure we want that language in there. It, I, I had, it, it had been left in, it was kind of a, a later addition to the agreement. It got left in because um, I didn't see it as a big problem and it, it doesn't affect the city, but one of those two parties doesn't want it in there. So we still have to negotiate that. I wanted to highlight that, so um, we'll ask the water board to approve these two agreements. It's substantially the form before you, and I don't believe whether the language is in there or out of there. A, it's in the recitals, so it's not part of the agreement part of it, and B, it doesn't change the um, context of the agreement at all, uh, or any water we would provide will affect that in any way. So I believe it's not a substantive change, that whether it's in there or not, I just wanted to highlight it. We'll have you prove it in the form that's in front of you today, but that may, that's one change I wanted to let you know. So does their reclamation plan currently show those as lined reservoirs? Um, it shows them as reservoirs. I think there's still a discussion. I believe it says, I believe it, it's reservoirs um, lined by slurry walls. I guess as long as it says line, it, my concern would be if it does not, the reclamation plan does not show a lined reservoir, because they got a bond for that. And in, in my mind, it'd be a little bit extra sure you, the city, that you don't have a, you've got a temporary lease and you got a 20 year lease. If they don't line these, you have a perpetual obligation, right? I guess long run, I'd only be obligated up to 20 years, but I guess in, in my mind, and I don't know, Barb, maybe, I don't know if you know that, if, does the reclamation plan show it as a lined reservoir, then it would be at least in, in accordance with that there's temporary water demand? versus more of a perpetual obligation is my only concern. Go ahead, Lori. Two things. Under mining plan, they have bonded for the slurry wall. Okay. So it is bonded. South of the road is bonded for the slurry wall. How we line those ponds and how we work with the city regarding their long-term depletions is still in process. And I'm not worried about as much on the first line and the rest of the board and speak into it, but on the stuff on that the city owns. I'm more worried about the privately owned, um, that if we have an agreement with somebody on that, that the reclamation plan and their bonding and everything fits together with what the agreements say, that's my only concern. So per the state engineer's requirements, you bond for a slurry wall until and unless an augmentation plan is approved by the board. Right. Um, so they'll have a temporary substitute supply plan? Correct. So that happens. Okay. The, the plan is to line the ponds. Right. How we do it, if it's a clay liner or a slurry wall, we will be on I just want to know that they've got the bonding that is tied to that, that they have that cost and they have that obligation such that they're sure in the cities and that they will ultimately line it in one shape or form. So we don't have a prison long going obligation that the city would somehow have to be worried about. That, that's not yeah, because we've been pretty clear in our negotiations with them that we have a historical lease back for the water until we go through water court, until the land develops, until we need it. We, we can lease it back. But we've been real clear. This water south of 119 is no, never going to be part of a permanent augmentation plan because you're going to build development out there and we need to put it in the tap. Right. And I just want to make sure that the reclamation plan kind of follows that if somebody does. Yeah. The reclamation shows now shows one lined pond and one open pond. However, a permit is bonded for a slurry wall around the entire property. So until one or both are lined and there's an augmentation plan in place, the bond stays in place for the slurry wall. Okay. For the DRMS and the state engineer, are in sync about that. Okay. All right. Are there other questions on this? Go ahead, Allison. Um, so, is the plan to get a five year SWSP and one year court? Yeah, they'll have to get a temporary substitute supply plan for the term of the mine. So, that'll be the five, that'll be the five, first agreement, five year agreement. 
we have to get a temporary substitute supply plan that that will be a separate process and then um, if if they don't well we'll have to do a permanent augmentation plan afterwards that's the long-term agreement and assuming that they get a storyline and assuming the state accepts that wants the state accept that 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 so the temporary substitute supply plan is like is before the state engineer the permanent one is through water court but, but they wouldn't have a permanent augmentation plan if they line the, if they line it and it's accepted right i mean there'd be maybe the, the there may be some depletions that go once the lining is there may be certain things that would be longer but i don't think they're going to need a permanent plan for augmentation are they if they line the talking about the land to the side so they should if, if it Truly accepted by the state. The, the, the their water court obligation would be if they want to change water and put it into storage and that sort of thing. Which I don't know if that'd be the bonus ditch that they have or how that would work in terms of what water they would use for a junior priority. They would, they would get a junior priority. Yeah. Anyway, but I think that's how it would. And then they'd have to change the bonus ditch shares for the organization. Well, they've already dedicated the bonus yeah, ditch shares to the city, and we're in the process. So we would supply them the amount of water. Yeah, we would we would supply them um, water for a twenty year period if it's needed. We're hope we're hoping that it's not needed. Yeah. But but I think the bonus ditch has been dedicated to the city. It'll ultimately be used for the potable supply for the proper property around the lakes. The lakes are lined, so they don't need permanent augmentation. They could file for a junior storage right to try to fill them with that way. But that's that's absent the bonus ditch. I mean, namely that's been dedicated to the city. That's going to be used for public water. There'd have to be other water used to fill them, or a junior appropriation would be how the water would work in terms of the water and pond. If I'm understanding this right. Yeah, which is probably what they would use. We would use the reclamation agreement to fill them more more than likely if they unless they fill them during the free river. But that's only a 20 year period. There's not a perpetual. No perpetual. So the city's obligation would only be during that interim period, right? Yeah. So there's no perpetual obligation for the city to the columns to put water in. Correct? We've been real clear about that. Okay. So it was a chalk, chalk this up as a UV question, I suppose. But um I mean the the, the liner covers ground groundwater losses or, or is mitigation against groundwater losses. But so what we're talking about here is like evaporative losses, for example, that would be the city's obligation to refill after that 20 year period? No. no. The, the, if if they don't file for a, a new junior storage right, or they don't go somewhere else and lease some water somewhere, then their ponds will basically eventually dry up. <laughs> And you know they're going to want to, they're going to want to keep them full for aesthetic reasons because they have development around it and so I'm, I'm pretty sure that they'll eventually go file a junior water right. Um, and, then, and then and then what they do is they just basically fill them when there's surplus in the yeah. in the creek. Yeah. Whatever there's a very junior fall. Or or they can you know they can lease water other places. Sure. There further questions? So we need a uh, recommendation by the water board, and I guess we'll do it in two pieces. Um, one for the short term and one for the- that, That'd be great, yeah. Okay. Include that. Okay. And, and just make, if I don't mind, make sure it's substantially in the form because there's always a, a tweak here that if anything changes significantly of any significance, then we will have to come back to the water board. Okay, um, any further discussion? Otherwise we need a motion and we'll do it, I guess, um, we'll do eight, the temporary, um, sorry, let me pull up the, what we're calling the temporary mining water supply agreement first. So we need a, a motion to recommend that for approval by the city council. I'll move it. We got a motion, is there a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. 
So now we're on to the second agreement, which is uh, the water supply agreement. So this is the 20 year agreement, is that right? Now? Yes. Okay. Um, once again, we need um, a motion to recommend <coughs> approval of the water supply agreement for the Urban Thomas Reclamation for the City Council. So we have a motion. Is there a second? <coughs> Motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those yeah, I'll ask just one more question. Sure. So, I mean, is it is it typical to, to not have, for example, a little bit more certainty with respect to kind of like, but of course, I understand that we're, we're working from the city's perspective, right? And so, and, and of course, there'll be this pond out there that potentially that will probably be filled, pro probably be filled because it, you know, because the developer wants it to be aesthetically good, you know. Of course, the city probably has very limited kind of what say in that in a way, other than just wanting our, our community to be nice and, uh, and pleasant to live in and not have a big wine, wine pond that's empty, I suppose, in the middle of it. So, um, do we, do we, is it, is it typical to have? that type of uncertainty at, that, at this point in the process, I suppose? Or is it, it from your experience, Ken, for example, it, have, in other types of scenarios that you've been in, has this been kind of where people are at in the process, where we're at right now? Actually, this is the first ever mining we've ever had. In the yeah, it seems <laughs> that we've never this, had a gravel mine in Long Mountain before. This seems it's, very strange to me in, yeah, in a sense. That, I mean, I know that you know we've had we have this historic mining on um, within our community, and eventually those things get kind of annexed into the community, etc. And we have all these gravel ponds around us, etc. Um, I'm just curious, and this is of course the first one where it's going to be an active, I think, mm -hmm. operation within the city limits, and I just wonder whether there's just a, a bit more special consideration with respect to. Their reclamation plan, like a little bit more certainty with respect to their reclamation plan, given that it's within the city limits at this moment, right? And it's not just something that will potentially annex later because it's outside of our purview, right? Yeah, yeah no, it's uh, it, it's a little bit that way. It, there is some certainty in that if it were mined and reclaimed pursuant, it does have a reclamation plan that's approved. Okay. So if it, if it were mined. So a little bit of uncertainty is because of what Longmont's doing by asking for the for the reclamation to be changed north of Kim Pratt. South of Kim Pratt, um, honestly, the entire area was going to be mined. Well, the entire north side of it was the area through here was always going to be mined all the way over, and then when Costco came in, that shifted. That took that mining out, which kind of put the whole reclamation plan a little bit in limbo. And so, a little bit of it's because we're we're balancing the great community interest in having the economic development and affordable housing. So that's what kind of so that made it hard for the mining operator who now has a much smaller area to mine, <laughs> yeah. but still has to put this big slurry wall in. So that's why the negotiations were a little bit. So that's. Why it's a little bit different in this one particular one, and why we do have to change the mining reclamation plan a little bit because we are preferring. So, but yeah, I would say, yeah, I don't know that we'll ever have much more mining in the city, but uh, um, it, it's a little those those things. We're trying to juggle multiple competing interests here. I think Tom brings up a good point, though. Of you're going to have two lakes right on Highway 118. <laughs> That if I understand this right, they've got, they don't have the permanent water supply other than maybe a junior filing such that, you know, if those go in at some point, you know, from an aesthetic perspective, you know, Longmont's not obligated to provide the water long term. So they've got to figure it out at some point. Mm -hmm. And I think Tom brings up a good point of if development occurs all the way around the property, you know, does that... Does somebody come back to the city at, down the road at some point and say, hey, we need permanent? That isn't what these agreements say. That's just, I guess, a concern long term. Mm -hmm. if, if, and I, I think it's a good point. It is. 
So, so but, and we, I mean, to, they, they, they are incentivized for, for in, in other ways to, to keep those, to keep those working, so. The only concern though is they've got a 20 year agreement with the city where they could fill them. So the issue would be, okay, we got this 20 year agreement, we're gonna keep them full and then is the developer gone at that point? And now what do you do with these bonds down the road in terms of keeping them full? The, the actual, um, there, there's in, in the agreement, there's a, there's a condition um, the developers turning it over to the HOA pretty quickly. And the HOA is going to be set up, you know, eyes wide open to, to take care of that authentication. Well, I, I just get nervous of if the HOA does get it and they don't have a good permanent water supply and you want to keep levels full, somebody, it could be an issue down the road. So I, I think Tom's right to bring that. That's a good point. But as this moves through the process, and development plans come for that parcel, I think that's something that needs to be very explicit. <laughs> so the developer and the HOA that if you just have a junior right, there may be long periods where you don't, you're not in and those, if you're viewing those as aesthetic ponds, it may not turn out that way. I mean, that, so that's that's a good point in the sense that there's another bite at this apple, I suppose, when that, when that area around it gets developed. Right. And so like, this isn't the be all end all necessarily with respect to making sure that those ponds stay filled sure. and that, that at some point when that land does get, get developed it maybe it deserves more scrutiny at that point. Right, I, I think that's a great yeah. point. Is there any other questions on this? Um, paragraph 5 of the second agreement indicates that it looks like you need a lateral extension a 20 year term. There, um, There is, yeah, an extension term. So would they be obligated, if Longmont wanted to continue in the supply, would they be obligated to continue to pay for that? I don't think they'd be obligated to take it. Um, it would just give them an opportunity, to HOA them an opportunity to take it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Any other Which comments? It's really up to the city whether we, it would be extended at that point. The city's in complete control of whether we would extend so, so one more, I guess, just one question about process. When they come through, so we're dealing with, right now we got Costco and multifamily. There's gonna be a subsequent raw water dedication. Whatever they plat. Right, so, so to Tom's point, when that plats, that's gonna be coming back to the water board too. And that yeah. may be another point where, yeah. you know, bringing that issue up, it's not necessarily a, a potable water requirement per se, but I think it is. a. I mean, it's a good point of just making sure everybody's on the same page and there's a water obligation there, especially if they're viewing it as an aesthetic lake that they don't have a permanent water supply currently to make that happen. Okay. All right, so go ahead and stop. Still waiting for the recommendation. Oh, you got the recommendation. Yeah, yep. motion and second. No, okay. All right, so we have motion and second, and that was the further discussion. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, great. So, welcome back, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> your um, so, we're on to item nine. We didn't have any items from the staff. Yep, right. Items from board um, review of major project listings and items kind of scheduled for future board meetings. Um, I guess one item is, you know, Kathy was the vice chair of the water board. So I don't know, at, at some point we're going to need to probably establish a new vice chair. So in August, we re-elect officers. Perfect. So. Okay. Anything else from the board for consideration? Okay. Um, item 11 is informational items and water board correspondence. Ken, I think you have an item or two attached. I don't know if you want to speak to those. Um, well, they're just um, copies of emails. So I don't have to I'm trying to be transparent for yep. such an Sounds good. Um, and with that, we're on to 12. 12 days cash and lieu review. That'll occur um, next in September. And now we're on to item 
13, which is an executive session um, to discuss security protocols for one month water system. Um, so based on that, we're going to need to close the meeting. Um, and I don't know, Heather, the executive session, we will yet to read some protocol on stepping into it. I don't know. Um, just, just this right here. We have to read the record. Oh. <laughs> generally, one of the people on the board would make a motion to go into executive session for a sanitation under the Colorado Revised Statutes, and we have to have unanimous approval. I'm not the attorney for the board, so I'm not going to make that recommendation. Whatever you guys generally do it is fine, all right? So, so I just liaison so stay in or go out for the executive? Well, I would think. That's a question. I think she's part of the board. Yeah, yeah. so you she's stay here. Some do it one way, the same way. Here's your hat return. See you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'll yeah, that was actually that would be great. Thank you. Bye. For my turn, I think the question we're going to have. Um, I don't know about recording. The camera can stay on until we make the motion. Then that's okay. Right. Well, and sometimes that, whether or not it's recorded or not, is that the recommendation? Yeah. Yeah. It's not recorded. Okay. All right, um, so do you want to, do we have something to read in in terms of prior to the recommendation based on what statute? I mean, that's my experience of the executive session. Yeah, um, I can, I can go ahead. Um, staff will ask water board to convene in an executive session to discuss matters concerning specialized details of security protocols for Long Lodge water system, um, primarily focused on both on cybersecurity and instrument overall. You know, what does this what does the staff do? Um, we're doing it's done in an executive session because all water system security items are federally controlled um, okay. from disclosure. So we need a motion um, by the board um, to go into executive session. So there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 So we'll go ahead and take a break while you, if you want to turn the recording device.